Final Cut Pro has changed a lot over the years, and if you're still exporting the old way, you're wasting time, losing quality, and probably hurting your YouTube growth. Today, I'll show you the best export settings, plus a secret trick that can actually get you more views that a lot of people don't talk about. Now, this might surprise you, but the best export settings right now this year isn't the master file or ProRes. I actually use the export for socials setting, and here's why. Number one, speed. It's much faster. You don't get those massive hour-long ProRes exports. Social's preset is built around H.264, which is lighter and quicker. Secondly, let's talk about quality. You don't lose any sharpness. I've tested it out. It balances file size and quality, so your video looks just as good when it hits YouTube. Because you're exporting in the same language that YouTube already uses, the platform doesn't need to squish your video that hard. That means fewer blocky edges and better color after the upload. Think of it like giving YouTube a ready-made file instead of one that it has to go and translate. Okay, so here's the part hardly anyone talks about. If you upload in 4K, you can actually get more views, and there's a few reasons for this. Okay, so the number one thing that you need to know is that YouTube actually treats 4K uploads differently. They get higher bit rates, so the video looks sharper and smoother. So even if you still shoot in 1080p, Exporting in 4K forces YouTube to give you that higher quality stream. And here's the kicker. Most people are watching on 4K TVs, 4K phones, and even laptops and iPads. A 4K badge on your video makes it stand out and YouTube loves and recommends it. Uploading in 4K is like getting the VIP treatment from YouTube's algorithms. Now, of course, if you can film in 4K, really from 2025 onwards, you should be shooting in 4K for the best quality. Even if you can't and you still have a 1080p camera, definitely try and create a 4K timeline and export in 4K. It's going to upscale your video very slightly. It's not going to look massively different, but because of that bitrate, it's going to look better on people's TVs. And a lot of people watch on TV. Just check your YouTube analytics. Also, what you have to think about is two things here. Number one, a lot of people want high quality videos, so they're going to be searching that out. Imagine you had two videos about the same thing and one was in 4K and one wasn't. You're much more likely to watch the 4K one. And then secondly, what I've noticed, I have a 4K TV at home and some TV providers actually bumping up the 4K footage first because it looks better on their displays. So just bear that in mind. Your video might be dropping down a couple of uh, places in the algorithm or the playlist because it's not in 4K. You know, if everything else is the same, if the titles are good, the thumbnails good, the content's good, which one would you click? Of course, that 4K one. Now, HD looks fine, but 4K looks more clickable. And you also get that little 4K badge in the top right. Okay, step three, some of the settings that you'll want to tweak when you export. Now, this is how easy it is. I've put a few clips in the timeline here, and uh, you know, imagine this is your huge timeline. We've got all the shots edited. Come up here to the share button, and then ignore all these other ones. Go to social platforms. Now, what you want to make sure that you do, especially for YouTube as well, uh, rename your video. So I'm gonna call this YouTube video for this. Make sure you put a description, creator and tags in here because this is all metadata and it's all gonna help just very, very slightly um, get your video found, especially if you're also gonna upload it to other platforms as well. So that's the only thing we need to do this side is uh, title, description, uh, your creator, you can maybe put the name of your channel and all the tags. So video, Canon, whatever, whatever, do that. And then the settings here, you want to make sure that this is set to 4K. Now, it doesn't say 4K, but 3840 by 2160 is 4K. So make sure you've selected that. Uh, what you may find, if you've already chosen an HD timeline, that won't show up. So make sure your project timeline, when you create a new project, is also 4K. Compression. Always have this on multi-pass better rather than faster and pretty much everything else is done. And that's what I love about this export setting. There's not too much you can change. Just click next, save it wherever you wanna save it, and you are good to go. It will export fairly quickly compared to all of the other options, and it's gonna give you uh, that timeline. Just now, just one other word of note. You can see here on the right-hand side, the size that your file is estimated to be and also the frame rates and things. So I would just check through that and just make sure that if you filmed in 25 frames a second, this says 25 frames a second. It's all automatic. It makes it so much easier than before. And 
as I've mentioned, we've tried all of the export settings. And yes, of course, if you want the absolute highest quality, there are other options you can do, but this is gonna be almost indis indistinguishable, can't say the word, uh, to a YouTube viewer. It's gonna be very fast to process and it's gonna look great especially if you do this to your HD videos because it gives you that higher bit rate that you weren't getting before if you exported in HD. So right now exporting doesn't have to be slow or complicated. I've tried exporting in a manner of settings, pretty much every setting in YouTube. And I'll be honest, even when you export with some highly detailed settings, it really makes very little difference compared to this social setting um, on YouTube. Try it yourself, try, try, you know, watch another one of our videos where we show you the very best settings and using this. I think from 99% of people's YouTube videos, this is the setting to go for. So use that socials preset, tweak it for 4K and you'll get faster exports, better looking uploads and even a boost in views. Now, if this video has helped you, drop us a like and make sure to ask us any comments or questions below because we promise we do get back to every single question asked. And make sure to subscribe because we have a ton more Final Cut Pro tips coming up just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.